This is a recap of Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 3, Episode 4. There will be spoilers, so if you want to watch the program in full, go to YouTube or Prime Video. All right, let's get started. All right, our first model is Parminder Nagra, and she is a actress. I do not know what she's known for, but maybe you know her. This is a setting she put her in. The settings are getting extremely simple now from being very well orchestrated in the past. So she's in a red chair with a pale green background. The artists tend to not do anything with the background, so I think that's why they've kind of phased it out. So they have four hours to work, and after four hours they turn their easels around and we get to see, as well as the model gets to see, what they've done. This is the exciting part of the program to me. They turn the easels around and we get to see the model's reaction. Now, in order to be on this program, you have to submit a digital self-portrait and from that, artists get pulled to be in the program. So this is her reaction. And we've seen some reactions that have been both thrilling and also a little bit um, um, uh, gloomy. I'm, I'm not sure what to say about that, but there's some, there have been some mixed reactions, but she looked quite, you can see, she looks pretty content with what's been turned around. All right, this is number one. Um, uh, <laughs> I said this in other videos, when I'm not sure what to say, or I, I'm not feeling all, all the positive vibes, I, I sort of get mute. So let's take a look at this, and it does indeed very much resemble her, I mean, to some degree, I don't know. It resembles somebody. Does it resemble Parminder? I'm, I'm not convinced about that at all. There's something about it. Uh, maybe this happens in your painting or, or in your eye. First of all, I want to say what I like about it is I like that she put a blue background. I like it when whatever the background is pops through, through the real paint. But it's very linear instead of finding a lot of uh, planes within um, shapes. This is the second one. And uh, it certainly shows the expression that she had during the pose. And I do find the colors pretty rich. And I guess that's about all I can say about it. it although I, I've got to say, it has a resemblance to her. Now the next one is more painterly. And by painterly, I mean, kind of, well, when you can really see the strokes or the intention behind what the painter is doing. It also unfortunately for me, it looks a little bit like a cartoon, um, you know, animated in a way. And that's a specific style, so I don't have a problem with that. It's just not maybe my personal taste, but, um, but it's very well done and very carefully observed, so I really appreciate that. And so now she gets to pick one that is going to go home with her. This has nothing to do with the final judging for this episode. From this episode, there will be three models, and there, there will, excuse me, there'll be three painters and one model. The model takes one home and the judges will pick three semifinalists and only one of the semifinalists will go on to what they call the finals. This is the one that Parminder decided to take home with her. So um, she was pleased with it. So nice choice. All right, the next one up is Ben Okri. He is a writer and a poet. And in some ways, he kind of, I guess because of what he's wearing, it's just like, how, how could he not be a writer and a poet? He just looks like that's what you would think someone who was a writer and poet would look like. So once again, as I said, after three hours, they turn those easels around. Here they are turning them around, and he gets his first look at what they've done. And we get to see a, a, a little peek, although throughout the program, they will show you some of these paintings in their various stages, which is fun too. But there's something about the reveal that's kind of that aha moment in the program. So let's take a look at the choices that he has. All right, Ben Okri has this one as his uh, one of his choices, which, as I said before, when, when a oil painter puts in that background of red or blue, uh, I just find it fascinating when they let that color pop through. It, it's not something a watercolorist can do, um, not in this way anyway. But I, I, I thought this was a really satisfactory piece. Here's the second one, which uh, captures the pose he was in and, um, and is quite well done. 
I'm not so sure it has a likeness to him. But, you know, you can take 10 photographs of someone, snapshots is what I'm talking about, you know, on your iPhone, and each one is going to look a little different. So there's not any one picture that really captures a person's essence. And I think lots of times when portrait painters are working, they'll work from several different resources. And another reason why they want to have the person on site so they can see their expressions and, and capture some of, of their mood. So anyway, that's the second one. And I think this is a strong field for for him to choose from. This is the third one. There's just a lot of soul in this one, I guess, for me. And it has a lot to do with the way, the glance, the specific way that the model is posed. Also, in the previous episode, there was a painter who worked on a plank that plank of wood that he'd gotten from a dumpster, and they could not get over that. They just talked about that endlessly. This was also a piece of recycled wood that he was working on. You could see the cracks and whatnot. This time, they didn't even bring it up as being a factor. So it's just kind of funny with the judges. Sometimes they're like all in on the process, and sometimes they don't care, or it's edited out. I don't know. But now Ogri has a choice of which one to take home. And I was sure of which one I thought he would pick, but he, he did not pick the one that I would have picked. But he's a man of letters and deep thoughts, and so I suspect that might have influenced his choice of which painting to take home. And so this is the one that he decided to take. And really, any one of them would have been a, a lovely addition to a home. This also works, I've said this before in my recaps, it works as a painting whether it's recognizable of him or not. It's just darn good painting. All right, now the next uh, model is Trevor Eve, who's known for Waking the Dead on the um, BBC or BritBox and many other things. It is He looks different here because I have not seen him with the mustache and the goatee before. Usually when I've seen him, he's been clean shaven. So I recognize him, but uh, you might not because... Um, because this was this was an unusual look for him. Maybe it's for a role. I always say these actors, when they're not <laughs> doing things like this, they're probably doing Shakespeare on stage. Doesn't he look like he's ready to go do Shakespeare? And yeah, it does to me. So now it, the four hours are up, easels are being turned around, and uh, we get to see what his reaction is. And he looks quite delighted, I have to say. Isn't that nice? I mean, that's what you like about the program. It's about making people feel good, artistic uh, people doing nice things. This is um, the first one that he had to choose from. I really love the coloring in the skin. I mean, you could pick out pinks and blues and greens and all kinds of different colors. And I just find that fascinating as a painter. Um, but indeed, you could probably see it's um, something's a little... Um, I don't know what to say. Skewed? I'm not sure what it is. Something proportionally is a little bit off. But again, I'm sure the painter painted what he saw. Uh, there it is. At, at a dis That's the same painting we just saw, but I, I wanted to get this clip on so you could see it the way it really appeared on the canvas. And you really lose a lot of coloration when you pull back. I suspect she maybe didn't have time to do the background or likes to keep it pristine. This is a very intense portrait. And I, I, um, <laughs> it captures him, but not, not necessarily to some degree, but it sure doesn't have the expression that he had at the time, but it looks like he's getting to play, uh, getting ready to play a certain role with, with intensity. So, um, and I do like how rich the paint is. There's a lot of paint. It's, you see how, yeah, see how thick it is. Oh, I love it when a painter will do that and just commit to shapes, commit to texture and, you know, lights against darks. So I just find that so exciting. Okay, this is the third one. Much more muted, and um, but so carefully observed. And um, yeah, I just think this is a fine painting on its own. I, I would have this painting in my home. No problem at all. It's a contemplative study of, of someone in a certain degree of repose. And I, I, so, well done. So, as always, the sitter gets to pick which one they want to take home with them, and Trevor uh, made this pick. I thought he was going to pick the one with a very strong, intense uh, expression, but he didn't. He picked this one, which is a much quieter type of painting, but 
I think he'll enjoy it very much. All right, now we get to the actual judging. This is how things get determined about who moves on. So there are going to be three semifinalists chosen. So this comes around 45 minutes into the program, and the program's an hour long. So it's you get to see little snippets of what the judges say. But here are all the participants lined up, and they are going to be chosen, and we get to see who they choose. So it must be an exhausting day and an exciting day, and you must just have no idea if your name is going to be called or not. All right, this is the first one who's chosen for the semifinals of this episode. And you can see how it's a refurbished cabinet door. There's some sort of keyhole on the right. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a fine painting. I have no idea, and I will never know what they do for four hours, though, because it would just I just don't have, just, I'm a faster painter. Anyway, uh, this one I was really glad they picked this one because of all the paintings done today, this was my favorite for a variety of reasons, and uh, and so um, this this pleased me immensely. All right, the next one is oh this quiet one of Trevor, so. So we have three painters who are going to go on to to the further judging now. Now what they're doing this year that I enjoy is they're showing both their submission pieces and the piece that they do today side by side. So you can get a better idea of what these painters or artists can do when they have all the time in the world and you get a better idea of what the judges had to look at in their criterion for deciding who would be on the program. So we get to see that next. It's coming. Let's see. Ah, this, this surprised me because I, I really do like the painting that the artist did of Okri, but I am mystified by the self-portrait. That just doesn't make any sense to me at all. <laughs> Could you tell me if it makes sense to you? because it doesn't. I think I understand why the judges might let it through. They are always saying they want something different. They see a lot of good painting and they're looking for something different and it is different. Here's the second one. I really, really, really love the self-portrait on the right. Oh, and it, and it really did look like him too. It's just, I mean, that's just dark. That is good painting. And so you can clearly see the difference between what can happen when you have all the time in the world and can relax and get into your work as compared to what you have to do under the constraints of four hours and television cameras looking at you. But uh, I do think that this is a fine artist and I really like how he put the expanse of canvas on the left. Here is the one that I really, really liked as um, a submission for today. I wasn't as thrilled with her self-portrait. That, that was a little bit mystifying to me. Although, at, oh, I gotta say, it looked exactly like her. It was just an interesting choice. So my guess is that she does do a lot of red as the base before she puts her color on top. All right, now we get to find out who the winner is. And I had no idea because any one of those three would have been just fine with me. Now this winner's gonna go on to the semifinals, which will be episode seven. Here's a little hint. This is a detail of the painting that was chosen as the, uh, the finalist for today. And here's the painting very quiet painting. Um, they have passed by many paintings that are like this and in past episodes, and I, I don't know why, but in this one, they, they fell in love with it. Now, one thing that I kind of wanted to bring up is episode one and episode four. This was episode four, and I thought, man, that painting looks really familiar to me from a <laughs> from episode one. I need to go back and look. There's episode one. This was a portrait of Stanley Tucci. Uh, and I know this doesn't look like Stanley Tucci, the actor at all, but it's a darn good painting. And I, I, something about the coloration, something about exactly the way that the model was positioned. And it's going to be interesting to see this one and the one that was chosen today when it comes to the semifinals when they're painting um, hashtag against each other, you know, in a competition. But there's a real similarity to the two of them. All right, so remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time, episode five. Okay, bye-bye.